Hello, this is Dr. David Kreller of the Department of Chemistry of Georgia Southern University. Happy to be here with another chemistry instructional video. This one is all about titrations. And we're just going to talk about the concepts of titrations, specifically acid-base titrations. And as we work through this video, we're going to learn the meaning of all these different terms. So let's get started. And we're going to work through this video using a specific example. And so imagine that you are doing chemistry homework or you're faced with a problem in some situation that reads like this. You have a specific volume, 36.3 mil, of sulfuric acid in a specific concentration, 0.0529 moles per liter. And that sulfuric acid solution is going to be titrated with a sodium hydroxide solution that has a concentration of 0.0411 moles per liter. And the question then goes on to ask, what volume of sodium hydroxide will be needed to reach the equivalence point? Well, let's break it down. And the first thing we're going to do is understand the meanings of the words titrant and titrand. So we'll start with titrand. You know, in this volumetric analysis, we have two solutions. Each solution contains a chemical, and the chemical in the first solution is going to react with the chemical in the second solution. Titrand is the solution for which we have a known um, volume. So that's the sulfuric acid solution. So that solution is going to go in the flask, and that titrand solution is going to react with a titrant solution. You may run across this word equivalent, and actually the concept of equivalent is useful as you work through problems like the one example problem we set out at the beginning. We're going to build up this, the, this meaning of the word equivalent with a little bit of, starting with a little bit of background. And so remember that there's examples of so-called monoprotic, diprotic, and triprotic acids. Okay. And similarly, there's also examples of monobasic, dibasic, and tribasic substances. Okay. Well, the acids create hydrogen ions in solution. And actually, when it comes down to it, in the acid-base um, reaction, it's hydrogen ions that are reacting with um, hydroxide ions. And so really what it comes down to, it, certainly it's important how much, what the concentration is of the acid or base in solution. But what's really fundamentally most important, you could say, is the concentrations of hydrogen, reactive hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So that's why we came up with the word equivalent, okay, to allow us to discuss concentrations of what's really important, the hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. And so really, when it comes down to it, equivalent is basically fundamentally the same as a mole. However, you know, maybe it's just terminology, but you know, you would use the word equivalent when you're talking about the amount of one of these reactive particles, fundamental reactive particles, hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions. If you're talking about the, the amount or the amount of anything else, you would use moles. Let's work through a couple of examples to um, get you used to this. Okay, so if we had a one liter if we had one liter of a one mole per liter solution of nitric acid, okay, we would have one mole of nitric acid. Well, we would also have one mole of reactive hydrogen ions. However, because hydrogen ions are you know, the, the fundamental reactive particle in the titration, we would not say we have one mole of hydrogen ions. We would say we have one equivalent of hydrogen ions. So really, it means the same as mole, but it's just like, when do you use that word specifically for hydrogen ions, reactive particles? If we had one liter of one mole per liter phosphoric acid solution, of course, you'd multiply concentration by volume to find out that you have one mole of phosphoric acid. But because each mole, so each phosphoric acid sort of molecule or particle creates three hydrogen ions, you would have three equivalents of hydrogen ions. And of course, the same is true if we're talking about bases and hydroxide ions. Well, the concept of equivalent is useful because we can sort of say, like in these examples, use moles where it's appropriate to use moles and use equivalents where it's for those fundamental reactive particles. 
because in the acid base reaction when it comes right down to one equivalent of hydrogen ions I should say one equivalent of hydrogen ions here rather than acid neutralizes one equivalent of hydroxide ions as you can see it's one to one stoichiometry within that reaction so back to that example question that we're sort of working through as we go through here let's calculate the number of equivalents of hydrogen ions that are present in that 36.3 mil of 0 0.0529 moles per liter sulfuric acid well let's you know remind ourselves blatantly make this blatantly obvious here um, that when we're trying to calculate something like the equivalence of hydrogen ions it's really the same as the moles of hydrogen ions so the calculation of equivalence is fundamentally no different from a cal this type of calculation that would tell you moles so we would take um, volume of that solution of course it needs to be expressed in liters and multiply that by the concentration of course if we use the concentration of sulfuric acid which is the best we best we can do because that's what we start with then we have to multiply that by two hydrogen ions per sulfuric acid and that would give us 0 0.00384 moles of hydrogen ions however because hydrogen ion is a fundamental reactive particle we're not going to use moles we're going to use equivalence much like equivalent meant the same thing as mole normality kind of means this same thing as does molarity and again it's just a matter of knowing when you should use normality versus m molarity and so here you see the definition of normality it's the equivalence of reactive particles per liter now of course you know not it's not written here but molarity would be moles of some chemical species per liter of solution and typically sort of normality is totally connected to molarity it's a small you know integer multiple of molarity and so hopefully you can imagine that if it's a monoprotic acid or or monobasic base normality is equal to the molarity but if it's diprotic you have to multiply it by two if it's triprotic multiply by three and so if we ask ourselves the question hey what's the normality of that uh, solu solution of sulfuric acid for which we know the concentration well we could calculate that in two ways we could just divide the number of equivalents by the volume so we previously calculated the equivalents as 0 0.00384 equivalents of hydrogen ions just divide that by the volume 0 0.106 normal we would say that um, 0 0.0529 molar solution of sulfuric acid is actually 0 0.106 normal. And so, looks like a big equation, but really all I've done is just say that um, start with the molarity 0 0.0529, multiply that by the conversion factor. There's, there's two equivalents of hydrogen ions for every mole of sulfuric acid and then that equals 0 0.106 equivalents of hydrogen ions per liter but that's the definition of normality equivalence of reactive particles per liter so that's 0 0.106 moving right along equivalence point what's the meaning of that okay what does that word mean or term and so equivalence point is a point in the titration it's a point when the equivalence of hydroxide and hydro hyd hydrogen ions are exactly equal so expressed as an equation it looks like this that special point in a titration at which this equation is true and so we'll come back to that concept of equivalence point but first we're going to as our next job define what's meant by direct titrations and then also define what's meant by back titrations. So we'll start with di direct titrations and direct titrations are the most common form of titrations and probably you, the listener of this video, have even done some direct titrations. So in a direct titration and uh, we're going to use the same example you know with the, the sulfuric acid um, titrand solution with and the sodium hydroxide 
titrant solution. So we're starting with whatever number of moles of sulfuric acid are in that titrant solution, and that will correspond to a certain number of equivalents of hydrogen ions that are there. Okay, so if we were going to think about that's our starting point. So if we try to picture that. We could like say take this bar to represent the amount of hydrogen ions, the equivalence of hydrogen hydrogen ions in that solution. Okay, so that's our starting point. And we're going to add sodium hydroxide titrant incrementally, a little bit at a time, until we reach the equivalence point. So that's a direct titration. Of course, the back titration has the same starting point as the direct titration, i.e., that number of equivalents of hydrogen ions in the titrand solution. So here's our starting point. But in the back titration, the first thing we do is we add a known excess of a standard base to the analyte. You know, because the analyte is an acid, we're going to add base to it. Okay. Well, hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions are, of course, going to react with one another, consume each other, and then we would just be left over with a certain amount of hydroxide ion because it was added in excess. But then we would titrate whatever hydroxide ion was left over with a standard acid rea reagent. Okay. End point. What does that mean? Okay. Well, uh, in principle, it's not possible to observe the equivalence point, which we've de defined. The equivalence point is almost kind of like a, a, a theoretical idea. It's kind of like this one perfect point. But however, it's kind of like theoretical, because in reality, we can't observe it. But what we can do is, is that we can usually add an indicator to a solution to make that solution undergo some kind of abrupt very observable change in a physical property. We can typically, you know, try to organize things the best we can so that that endpoint at which the solution, specifically with through the uh, indicator, changes physical property. We try to we can make that as close as possible to the equivalence point. However, you're you're never ever going to have your endpoint exactly equal to your equivalence point there will be something referred to as a titration error. The endpoint volume, say the volume of titrant solution that we add, subtract the equivalence point volume. Blank titration. Well, this kind of follows from the idea that there's this thing called titration error. So the, we would uh, do a so-called blank titration if we carry out all the steps of the regular titration, but without the analyte. So, using this example that we're working with throughout this video, we would have a, a titran solution that does not contain the analyte, just has water. And then we would see how much of the titran solution we would have to add just to water, blank water, to, to reach the end point. And then that would allow us to estimate the titration error. Next, to define primary standard, We'll begin by reminding ourselves just what titrations are all about. And so titrations are analyses that are designed to tell us about the amount of a chemical, say our analyte. So we're always going from something that's known to something that's unknown. So in some cases we know the titrant concentration and we're going to use that to tell us the titrant concentration. But in there's other titrations, of course, in which it's the other way around. We know the titrand concentration, and we're going to use that which is known to tell us the unknown titrant concentration. So it's all about amounts or concentrations. And we have to know, we have to very quite accurately know the concentration of one to determine the concentration of the unknown. We use primary standards so that we can know the concentration of certain chemical solutions. So primary standard is a reagent that is a high purity 
and can be weighed out in an accurate amount and dissolved in a, some sol solvent, typically water, of course, for acids or bases, to prepare an accurately known concentration so that we know one of the concentrations from which we're going to calculate the concentration of the other thing that's unknown. Now, the primary standard has to have some pretty good physical properties. It should not decompose when it's stored. So in addition to its purity, it's got its um, stability. And it also should not react with the atmosphere. So for example, it shouldn't catch on fire as soon as you expose it to oxygen in the atmosphere. <laughs> or it shouldn't absorb water from the atmosphere. Let's say, for example, say sodium hydroxide, you take it out of the body and you start to try to weigh it. Well, if you set some sodium hydroxide on a balance, take its mass, so if you left it sitting there for a certain amount of time, you would observe that the mass would just slowly increase and increase because the sodium hydroxide is gathering water from the atmosphere. And so a primary standard shouldn't do anything like that. It should be easy to weigh. It should be very stable and easy to weigh in the atmosphere. And so the last thing we'll talk about is the concept of standardization. And this follows from the concept of primary standard. So many of the chemicals that we want to use as titrates are not as available as primary standards. Say for example, um, say in this example that we were using all the way through this video, you want to use a sodium hydroxide titrate solution. However, sodium hydroxide is not available as a primary standard. So you can't just weigh out sodium hydroxide, dissolve it in water, and then end up with an accurately known concentration. The problem with it, one of the problems with that, or the problems that underlies this inability to, to use sodium hydroxide as a primary standard is the fact that, as mentioned, it would absorb moisture from the atmosphere. However, we want to use it as a titrant. So what we can do, we can prepare a solution in the approximate concentration as is needed for the titration. So we would prepare a solution of sodium hydroxide as close as possible to the concentration as we could get it. And then we would use that titrant, here the sodium hydroxide, in an approximate concentration to titrate a solution of a primary standard. Now the primary standard in this case would be a primary acid. And so an example of primary standard acid is potassium hydrogen salate, or KHP. If we were going to need, if we were going to standardize an acid titrant solution, such as a solution of hydrochloric acid, we would have to use primary standard base, such as sodium carbonate. Okay. Thank you for listening, and thank you for learning.